Now it's on to Chicago and let's win there. Senator Robert Kennedy had won the California primary, a crucial step before the Democratic National Convention just two months away in Chicago. In the early morning hours of June the 5th, 1968, Kennedy held up his index and middle finger, flashing a V for victory sign at the crowd and departed the stage of the Ambassador Hotel in Los Angeles to the sound of chants. Within minutes, cheers gave way to screams. Immediately after he announced to his cheering supporters that the country was ready to end its fractious divisions, Kennedy was shot several times by 24-year-old Palestinian Sirhan Sirhan. He was pronounced dead a day later on June the 6th, 1968. The summer of 1968 was a tempestuous time in American history. Both the Vietnam War and the anti-war movement were peaking. Martin Luther King had been assassinated in the spring, igniting riots across the country. In the face of this unrest, President Lyndon B. Johnson decided not to seek a second term in the upcoming presidential election. Robert Kennedy, John's younger brother and former U.S. Attorney General, stepped into this breach and experienced a groundswell of support. Kennedy was perceived by many to be the only person in American politics capable of uniting the people. He was beloved by the minority community for his integrity and devotion to the civil rights cause. After winning California's primary, Kennedy was in the position to receive the Democratic nomination and face off against Richard Nixon in the general election. As star athletes Rafer Johnson and Roosevelt Greer accompanied Kennedy out a rear exit of the Ambassador Hotel, Sirhan Sirhan stepped forward with a rolled up campaign poster hiding his revolver. He was only a foot away when he fired several shots at Kennedy. Greer and Johnson wrestled Sirhan to the ground, but not before five bystanders were wounded. Greer was distraught afterward and blamed himself for allowing Kennedy to be shot. Sirhan, who was born in Palestine, confessed to the crime at his trial and received a death sentence on March 3, 1969. However, since the California State Supreme Court invalidated all death penalty sentences in 1972, Sirhan has spent the rest of his life in prison. According to the New York Times, he has since said that he believed Kennedy was instrumental in the oppression of Palestinians. Hubert Humphrey ended up running for the Democrats in 1968, but lost to Nixon. Robert Kennedy was the U.S. Attorney General from 1961 to 1964 and a U.S. Senator for New York from 1965 to 1968. A graduate of Harvard University and the University of Virginia School of Law, Kennedy was appointed Attorney General after his brother John Kennedy was elected President in 1960. Hey, if you're enjoying this video, make sure you give it a like and subscribe to remember this if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all of our latest content. In this role, Robert Kennedy fought organized crime and worked for civil rights for African Americans. In the Senate, he was a committed advocate of the poor and racial minorities and opposed escalation of the Vietnam War. Robert Francis Kennedy was born on November the 20th, 1925 in Brookline, Massachusetts, the seventh of nine children of Joseph P. Kennedy Sr., a wealthy financier, and Rose Kennedy, the daughter of a Boston politician. Kennedy spent his childhood between his family's homes in New York, Hyannisport, Massachusetts, Palm Beach, Florida, and London, where his father served as the American ambassador to the United Kingdom from 1938 until 1940. During World War II, Kennedy served in the US Navy. In 1946, he was an apprentice seaman on the shakedown cruise of a naval destroyer named for his eldest brother, Joseph Kennedy Jr., a Navy pilot killed during the war. After completing his military service in 1948, Kennedy graduated from Harvard University the alma mater of his father and older brothers. He went on to attend law school at the University of Virginia, earning his degree in 1951. That same year, Kennedy began working as a lawyer in the US Department of Justice. 
1952, he managed his brother John's successful campaign for the US Senate. The following year, Kennedy worked as an assistant counsel for the Senate Permanent Subcommittee on Investigations, headed by anti-communist crusader Senator Joseph McCarthy of Wisconsin. In the late 1950s, as chief counsel to the Senate Select Committee on Improper Activities in the labor or management field, Kennedy gained national attention for investigating corruption and the International Brotherhood of Teamsters, a powerful trade union led by Jimmy Hoffa. Kennedy led the committee in 1959 to manage his brother John's successful presidential campaign. After John F. Kennedy was elected president in November 1960, he named his brother Robert Kennedy as America's 64th Attorney General. In this role, Kennedy continued to battle corruption and labor unions, as well as mobsters and organized crime. In 1964, Jimmy Hoffa was convicted of jury tampering and fraud. As Attorney General, Kennedy also supported the civil rights movement for African Americans. In the fall of 1962, he sent thousands of federal troops to Oxford, Mississippi to enforce a US Supreme Court order admitting the first black student, James Meredith, to the University of Mississippi. The state's segregationist governor, Ross Barnett, had attempted to bar Meredith, whose enrollment prompted riots and violence at the school. Additionally, Kennedy worked with his brother, as well as his successor as president, Lyndon B. Johnson, on the landmark Civil Rights Act of 1964, which outlawed racial discrimination in voting, employment, and public facilities. Kennedy also acted as one of his brother's closest political advisors in the White House, and was involved in important foreign policy decisions, including the administration's handling of the 1962 Cuban Missile Crisis. He later wrote a book about the crisis titled 13 Days, which was published posthumously in 1969. On November the 22nd, 1963, 46-year-old President John F. Kennedy was assassinated in Dallas, Texas. Robert Kennedy stayed on as Attorney General under President Johnson until September 1964, when he resigned to embark on a campaign to represent New York in the U.S. Senate. Despite charges from some that he was a carpetbagger with little connection to the Empire State, Kennedy won the election and took office in January 1965. As Senator, Kennedy championed civil rights and social justice issues. He traveled to Appalachia, the Mississippi Delta, migrant workers' camps and urban ghettos to study the effects of poverty and made trips abroad to such places as apartheid-ruled South Africa to advocate for the advancement of human rights. Kennedy was also an outspoken critic of President Johnson's plans to escalate involvement in the Vietnam War. In 1968, Kennedy was urged by his supporters to run for president as an anti-war and socially progressive Democrat. Hesitant until he saw positive primary returns for fellow anti-war candidate Eugene McCarthy, Kennedy announced his candidacy for the Democratic presidential nomination on March the 16th, 1968, declaring, I do not run for the presidency merely to oppose any man, but to propose new policies. I run because I am convinced that this country is on a perilous course and because I have such strong feelings about what must be done and I feel that I'm obliged to do all I can. On March the 31st, 1968, Johnson announced that he would not seek re-election and Vice President Hubert H. Humphrey became the key Democratic Party hopeful, with McCarthy and Kennedy trailing closely behind. Kennedy conducted an energetic campaign and on June the 4th, 1968, won a major victory in the California primary. In the early hours of June the 5th, 1968, shortly after delivering a speech to celebrate his win in the California primary, Kennedy was shot in a kitchen corridor outside the ballroom of the Ambassador Hotel in Los Angeles. He died the next day at aged 42. The following year, Sirhan Sirhan, an immigrant from Palestine, was convicted of Kennedy's murder and sentenced to death. However, in 1972, after the California Supreme Court outlawed capital punishment, 
Sirhan's sentence was commuted to life in prison, where he remains today. On June the 8th, at St. Patrick's Cathedral in New York City, Edward Ted Kennedy, U.S. Senator from Massachusetts, and the youngest Kennedy sibling, delivered a now-famous eulogy for his brother, remembering him as a good and decent man who saw wrong and tried to right it, saw suffering and tried to heal it, saw war and tried to stop it. After the funeral, Kennedy's coffin was taken by train from New York to Washington, D.C., with hundreds of thousands of mourners lining the tracks along the route. The train arrived in the nation's capital that night, and a motorcade transported Kennedy's body to Arlington National Cemetery for a rare nighttime burial. Now it's time to hear from you. What are your thoughts on Bobby Kennedy and his legacy and his assassination? Let us know in the comments below, and if you haven't already done so, click the bell icon to stay updated on all of our latest content.